I created a, a game in Excel. I know a little bit of code, but Excel formulas is far easier than learning JavaScript or Python for me at least. So I wanted to share how I've made this game in Excel just for a bit of fun. I wouldn't say this is anything spectacular, but when I push F9 to refresh, it refreshes all of the formulas, giving me different skills and moves. You can see we've got a maximum of 63 up here. I'll show you how this works in a second, but I can say difficulty, let's say 25. Now when I refresh, it refreshes on easier skills. Now for a little bit of context, I coach trampoline and what this is, is a game that you would do on trampoline. So someone gets on, they do a skill, they get off, the next person gets on and they do a skill and then another skill. But sometimes individuals don't know what skill to pick. So I made a random generator for that. So for this first bit at the top, we've got difficulty and skill. The difficulty is essentially just the number in the skills matrix table, which if we come down to the bottom, you can see I just have all of the skills listed. I've got a number related to the skill, tuck jump, and then this is fig notation. You don't need to remember this because this is trampoline specific. And then you have the difficulty and that's the difficulty for the skill, not for the move that's being selected. The move that's being selected, so this difficulty where it says 25 is just the number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. This is the difficulty that's being picked from. If I go up to the table design, you can see this table is called skills. And when I go into the maximum cell, it's counting the skills inside of the, the table. I'm dividing by two because it counts each of these rows as two. I'm not entirely sure why, but I know when I fill it all out, it counts as two. I think it's because there's two numbers. You've got the number there and the number there. So when I've added this one and this one, it counts the numbers as two. So I just divide by two, which gives me a maximum of 63 because I have 63 skills in this table. Obviously number one, number two, so divide by two. So this is just one row. Hopefully that makes sense. And the way I'm getting it to randomly select skills is this first one is the reference number. So it's randomly selecting a number between one and then D4. You see D4 is the difficulty of 25. So when I say pick a skill, it's picking a skill between one and the maximum difficulty, which is 25, go back to our skills. So anything between one and 25 are available skills to be picked. If I increase the difficulty to 55, now it's going between one and and then if I go down to 55, it's any of those skills. This is something I certainly want to change in the future to make it more flexible with filters and other things, but this was made in like 10 minutes before, <laughs> before a meeting. And then for the selection of the skill, I'm using a V lookup. So what this is doing is vertically looking for D5. So it's looking for the reference number. So 21, looking at the skills table. So that's the table it's looking for. And then looking for the column number two. So we're now looking for 28 inside the skills table and column two. So 28 inside the skills table and then column two. And there it is the name. And so it shows one and a half twists. And what I'm doing over here is basically the same thing. I've got my reference number. So randomly select between one and then D4, which is the difficulty up here. And then all of these are exactly the same. You see as I go down, the move order are just numbers because you have 10 skills in a routine. So that's just to know what skill is what when you're coaching. So do skill six and skill seven. So backline in pike to tuck jump. And then inside of the skill section, it's the same as the skill section over here, except it's referencing this reference box instead of that reference box. And if I go down, you can see now it's G7. So it's referencing this one like that. And that's the same all the way down. And when we go to the fig, it's doing the same as the skill, but you'll see there is column two, go to fig column three and then difficulty column four. So it's doing the same V lookup. It's still looking up the reference number, but instead of looking at column two, it's looking at column three or column four from the skills table. Then at the bottom, we have the difficulty, which is just the sum of all the difficulties brought in. Now, for those that are familiar with trampoline, this isn't technically accurate because of the rotations and the twists that are happening between the skills, because you wouldn't technically do a three quarter somersault straight to seat landing. That's not a thing you would typically do. So the difficulty isn't technically accurate because I've taken the difficulty difficulty as the skill and as it would be expected to be competed. So this difficulty is more of an estimate, but this is meant as a fun game, not a serious competition training routine or anything like that. And this is the sort of thing that I'm just messing around with inside of Excel to have a bit of fun play. But also this adds a completely different sort of twist or view on routines in trampoline competitions. For those unfamiliar, it, there's no point in me really talking about it, but it, it just gives a different view on something just by playing a quick game in Excel. It, it's fun.